Have you been ignoring this little tail dragger included with X-Plane 11? Well, if you enjoy hand flying, the Agile Stinson L5 Sentinel might just be for you. A deceptively simple aircraft, many a sim pilot has quickly found themselves off the runway and into the trees. Today we will show you how to successfully handle the Stinson. Welcome to Flight Brothers FT, produced by Tim and Lee. Plan the flight and fly the plan. All charts courtesy of Navigraph Charts, not to be used for real-world navigation. Be sure to subscribe and explore the rest of the channel for high-quality aviation content and entertainment. A custom-built military aircraft, the Stinson was optimized for reconnaissance and light transport. Its agile handling and short-field capabilities earned it the nickname, the Flying Jeep. Unfortunately, those same characteristics can quickly get an unprepared pilot into trouble. Today's tutorial is going to guide you through the extremely simple cold and dark power-up and mostly focus on the peculiarities of takeoff and landing. Welcome to Switzerland, Samidan Airport. Our Army Stinson today has a unique history involving Switzerland, which we'll save for the end of this video. Laminar has given us a pretty detailed model with this default aircraft, and his diminutive size lets you attain some great close-up views that aren't possible with the enormous aircraft. This plane is very bare bones, and most uniquely has a clear skylight roof, which is a rare feature on a high-wing aircraft. Special thanks out to Larry Weston, the webmaster of StinsonFlyer.com, for the Stinson checklist we're using today. Though the list is for the Stinson 108-3 Voyager, it has the basic flow we need with only some variation in performance numbers. First up, gross weight, not over 2400 pounds. We'll use the X-Plane weight and balance menu to check our weight and balance and our fuel while we're here. You can see our L5 is a max weight of about 2200 pounds and we're well below that. Next we're off to our pre-flight checks. The ignition is off, that's the black magneto control on the left panel. The parking brake is set, that is the red handle in front of the center stick on the floor. To full right is park, to full left is off, and if you toggle it using B, it tends to hide behind the stick. Pedo covers, oil level, fuel caps, that's not really simulated, but you can go outside and look for it if you want. Flight controls, we can really appreciate all the linkages because they're pretty much exposed and viewable here. And we can go out to the external views to watch the ailerons, elevator, and rudder in motion. All of our controls are free and correct. Next up on the list, trim. We do have an elevator trim, again, beautifully modeled with the exposed system on our left. X-Plane always loads this Stinson aircraft trimmed a bit down. I believe that's pretty much going to be correct for our L5. I haven't even bothered trying it in the neutral position. I've not found a rudder trim on the L5, but the Voyager list has it. I believe I've seen in Voyagers on uh, YouTube a uh, roof-mounted rudder trim, but that doesn't apply here today. The master battery switch is on an overhead panel on the upper left of the wing route. Quite a view with our skylight roof, really. You'll note the left fuel tank gauge is here, so let's check it while we're looking. You can even see the fuel line itself is exposed right here, running down towards the engine. We will also want to check our right fuel tank located on the right wing route and make sure we do not have an imbalance. The small electrical panel on the right side contains a spotlight for the front pilot. Our carb heat is full in, that's the handle on the right. Full in is off. Pulling up the X-Plane map using the M command, we can check the local weather and get the altimeter setting. The winds are calm, which is perfect for such a light plane. I did try this in high winds once and uh, I, it was going backwards, even though we were pointed forwards, it was, uh, it was rough. Our altimeter setting is 30.24, so some nice thick mountain air today. Now we'll verify our radio located in front of the center stick. The stick's not hideable, so I've set up a viewpoint using the control key and a number from the number pad for quick access. The external lights are all located on the left overhead panel with the main battery switch. So let's turn them on so we can verify operation and just appreciate the model a little bit. Strobes, beacon light, wingtip nav lights, and the landing light, which is just located under the left wing only, are all working. 
Now that our pre-fight is done, we can move along and let's power up. First I will shut down the unnecessary external lights except for the beacon to signify we're about to start engine. And we'll shut down the radio so we don't power spike it when the engine starts. Next we're going to verify that we have a fuel tank selected and that it actually has fuel. In this case we're going to use the left tank and we already have verified it has quantity earlier. Notice there is not a both tank option, you will be alternating in flight. Throttle goes to the 1 quarter inch open position. Your guess is as good as mine where that is, just make sure you give it a little bit of throttle before you try starting. The black ball labeled T at your left hand position is the throttle, and you'll notice the arm extending rearward to the repeated control in the rear seat. It's actually pretty cool to have this repeated rear seat, and you can fly the aircraft from there. Now we're going to increase the fuel mixture to full rich, it was at uh, cutoff earlier. So we're going to push that left hand handle full in. The large black handle beside it controls the ignition magnetos and we're going to select both just like you do in all your other GA aircraft. It's not listed but I'm going to turn on the generator at this point, I guess we could do it after engine start, but I'm going to do it now. That is the lower guarded switch on the right hand side of the panel. We have a primer handle here, but I've yet to need it. Could just be X planes, very forgiving, but uh, you can see in our checklist if it was cold, we could give it uh, three strokes before starting. So now to start, we're going to open the upper guard, toggle the ignition. After a second or so, you can release it, and your engine should be running. Moving into the warm up phase, our oil pressure should be reading about 20 psi when the engine's between 900 to 1000 RPM. The warm-up setting for the engine is 1000 RPM, so let's bring it up to 1000. You can see the oil temperature is below 60 Celsius, and that is the temperature we want to be warmed up to. So we'll check that again as we taxi out, make sure we're there before we take off. Our ammeter is above our generator switch. You can see in the positive range right now, so we are charging. Flick it off and you'll see it goes negative, so turn it back to on. For our run-up, uh, the magneto check, we're going to want 2000 RPMs you can see. And once we get there, we will toggle the ignitions to right only, and then the left magneto only. We should see a dip of about 50 RPM or less, and between the left and the right we don't want a whole lot of variation. Then return the switch to both, and reduce the RPM to 1000. Okay, at this point let's get the radio back on, and the transponder to standby. Before we taxi, I'm going to turn on some exterior lights. We're going to add the wingtip nav lights as well as the landing light. Since we don't have a taxi light, I just like the landing light on for added visibility. Now we're going to address one of the biggest difficulties this aircraft has, so uh, I would say this is one of the top three reasons to watch this video. Taxiing it is terrible. Using the rudder, you'll see we only get a few degrees of turning here, and, and that's not going to make it for hardly any taxiway you've ever seen in your life. So you can try and force it, uh, you could do some differential braking and uh, gun the engine up and back down. So here, I've locked the left toe brake, rev the engine up, as soon as we start skidding out, cut the power, great, we've skidded into a turn. Uh, that was effective, but it's, it's a pretty stupid way of maneuvering. So, uh, just Looking around here, I could not find a tail wheel lock, so I decided let's go into the X-Plane control settings and find that setting, because a castering tail wheel is typical for taxi on a tail dragger, and you would lock it again for takeoff and landing. So to get this set up, you're going to go up to the top menu bar and look for the control settings. It looks like a little slider icon. Once you get in there, we want to select keyboard settings. In the search bar, you will type tail wheel and then look for toggle tail wheel. You want toggle not lock because you want it to be able to lock or unlock it. I have assigned the key U on the keyboard because it's not currently in use by any other command and the letter U makes me think of U for unlock, so that helps make it memorable. Now let's go try maneuvering with the tail wheel unlocked. Here we go, I've engaged the right brake, let's rev the engine. Look at that. Now that is typical tail dragger handling. Now our biggest problem is avoiding unintended ground loops. So what I'm going to do is alternate locking the tail wheel on straightaways and unlocking it to use differential braking on turns. 
that might be cheating a little bit, but you know, we, we don't have the physical inertia, so unless you're gonna keep your eyes completely glued out the window uh, to maintain course, I find that to be really the best way with tail draggers and X-Plane. But don't forget, lock the tail wheel for takeoff and landing. You might even add it to your checklist. All right, the next page of the checklist is for takeoff. Parking brake should be off. Mixture to full rich, so push it in if it's not already. We want fuel to the fullest tank. I'm gonna to switch to right since we use the left for warm up and taxiing. Carb heat should be off so that handle stays full in. Flaps should be up. However, I've used one notch extensively uh, and it works fine. It's actually perfect for short field work. For today, I'm gonna to do a clean takeoff with the flaps up for you, but first, let us observe the flaps in operation. The black handle on the left of your seat controls the three position flaps. It is also linked, just like most of the other primary controls, to repeated control in the rear. So if we go back there, just like everything in the Stinson, you get a great view of the control cables in action. Now, time for the second super important tip for the Stinson. This aircraft is very light, very short. Your horizontal stabilizer is very close to the engine. And so its own prop wash can get the horizontal stabilizer flying. And that's gonna remove any control you had once that tail wheel lifts off the ground. And at that point, if you don't have enough airspeed to gain rudder authority, and you probably won't, uh, the aircraft can begin to weather vane in any crosswind you've got, as well as to rotate with the P factor from the engine. So this is a huge issue, and I can guarantee almost that you are going to crash on the ground at some point if you forget to do this. If you have already crashed your X-Plane Stinson with this exact scenario, please tell me in the comments, because I feel like this is one of those things that probably literally everybody who loads this is probably going to do. I personally did it twice before I figured out what was going on. All right, so the solution here is actually very simple. Pull back on the stick. That's going to hold the tail down. You will uh, release the pressure gradually as you're in your takeoff roll. I'm going to say between 45 to 50 miles per hour. And uh, you're probably going to get the feel of that just by trying it a few times. So now we're ready for takeoff. Stick is back, gradually bringing up power so we're not overwhelmed by that P factor. The plane is quite squirrely, so if it starts turning on you, and uh, it's gonna be ugly, and you're gonna see that here in just a moment. Now obviously I could use a little practice myself. I've had many better takeoffs than the one I'm showing you here, but I'm trying not to edit out all of my stupidity on these videos, so you can enjoy seeing my own struggles learning a new aircraft. Once we're climbing, you'll find the handling of the Stinson is quite agile, but requires very gentle inputs. There's no AP in here, so you're gonna be hand flying constantly, and you must monitor your condition constantly. Uh, you know, we're just so light, anything that knocks it around, and we're suddenly at a new pitch or new course that you did not intend. You may have also notice the panel does not have an artificial horizon, so we're definitely gonna avoid IFR conditions with our Stinson. Once you are climbing or cruising, you wanna monitor the engine RPMs. Try and keep it in the green band. I, I don't really know if the RPMs here on our checklist particularly matter since that's from the other model of Stinson, but uh, you can actually hear this engine over revving. So if you've leveled out and you're still full throttle, you're probably gonna hear that you're exceeding. Now landing the Stinson is uh, shall we say the, the third interesting little quirk of this beyond the taxi tail wheel thing and pulling back on the uh, flight stick before takeoff. Your flaps need to be introduced carefully because they are a large surface and it's really gonna change the pitch of the aircraft. So here you go, I've thrown it full out to the third position suddenly and you can see we've immediately pitched up, we lost a ton of airspeed. Now had I not been intending for that and not prepared, that could be a disaster. Uh, another little surprise here, the approach is going to be flown very steeply, somewhere between 60 to 80 knots at idle power with full flaps. You want your carb heat on, so that's the handle full out during descent. A normal, shallow, standard three degree approach is not going to work out great for this. Every time I tried it, 
uh, I would end up crossing the threshold too fast or super nose high and it didn't have good visibility and then you have a lot of power in and it just uh, it never worked out well. So you end up with these crazy descents of about a thousand feet per minute, sometimes more. Obviously you're gonna flare out, but as crazy as they look, like you're, you're dive bombing, it very nicely settles. So the stall speed here is around 45 miles per hour. So don't be afraid to see the needle dip so low. Uh, remember, you're gonna gently raise that nose to the attitude uh, it was at during taxi. Remember also not to give back any control stick to adjust that uh, pitch, otherwise you're very likely to get some nasty bounces. The aircraft will settle quite nicely to the ground if you flared at the uh, correct altitude. And if you just hold that stick back, you're also going to slow on the ground quite rapidly without much use of brakes. So uh, it's sort of funny, it looks like this insane approach and yet as soon as you pop the flare, boom, everything slows down, quite simple. One of the best things about this L5 though is that you really don't need a big developed airport. That's uh, not really what it was designed to do. So let's try it here at a grass strip. So I have us here maneuvering around to a grass runway. We're fairly high again and we're gonna use that incredible descent rate once again. I've got full flaps out, and we're gonna end up with a long landing here, and I probably should have done a go around, but you're gonna notice this very forgiving Stinson is slowing quite quickly, and probably even quicker now since we are on the grass. To get back out from this grass strip, it really isn't much different than the pay field. I am gonna use one notch of flaps. Be aware that if you don't release the uh, back pressure on the stick on your takeoff roll, you could find yourself flying at stall speed with the stick full back, and that's not the most pleasant thing to recover from. So you do wanna find that uh, sweet spot for releasing pressure to bring up the tail. Okay, uh, as you take off, if you're using flaps like I did on this one, you wanna be very cautious retracting that one notch of flaps. It makes a pretty dramatic change in pitch and it pitches the nose downward. So if you just lift it off and you pull those flaps, that could be a pretty unpleasant surprise. So I'd wait till I had a little bit of altitude first. Now we've covered all the main tips for this Denson. I know it really wasn't that difficult to cover, but it will take you a little bit of practice to kind of polish that out. And that's why I left you some of the footage of me flying this uh, in quite squirrely ways so you can appreciate that it will take some practice. So we hope you'll go out and give this living piece of history a try. After all, the price is right. It was free when you got X-Plane, so everyone has it. We really love uh, engaging with our audience here in the comment bar. So please, after you go out and fly this thing, come back, tell us how it went. Did you put it into the trees? Were you able to pull off a perfect three-point landing? Did you find out any other cool quirks that we haven't noticed with it yet? And of course, uh, don't forget to check out stinsonflyer.com. Once again, special thanks to Larry Weston, who uh, got back to us giving us permission and this fantastic history of the X-Plane Stinson L5. So until next time, some captains, remember, plan the flight and fly the plan. If you enjoy this content, consider buying us a coffee to show your support. Visit us at buymeacoffee.com slash flightbrosft or search for us from the menu if you'd like to contribute. A link will be provided in the video description below.